In this video, we're going to run through the most common questions that cold supermarkets ask in their interviews, and I'm going to help you plan fantastic answers that will get you a job working at Coles. So let's start with a question that Coles really like to ask, and it's asked in virtually every single interview. And that is simply, what time would you be able to work at Coles? And they are extremely interested in this answer. And if you don't plan and prepare well for it, you can blow the entire interview. So there's a simple procedure that I advise people to follow that tends to score very highly. So you want to show firstly that you're flexible, that you can be there when they need people in. Secondly, you need to show a can-do attitude. The way that people screw this question up is they immediately list the times that they can't do and then say that they can do all the other times, which is a very negative way to set up the question. You want to be listing as many times as you can do, and by doing that, you're showing your commitment to the job. If you're listing lots of times you can't do, it makes you seem like you're not really committed and you don't take your job very seriously. The other trick to be super successful in this question is to talk about certain times that they really like people in. So calls are really looking out for one, people who are reliable, and if you can bring any evidence to show that you're reliable, like a reference, that goes a long way. If you can do early starts, so that's when the store is opening, slightly more difficult to get people in at that time. Late finishes, so that's right towards the very end of the closing times. If you're happy to work late, that's great. If you're happy to work weekends, that's another more difficult time to staff because people would rather work Monday to Friday and have the weekend off, but... The stores are open, so someone's got to be in there. And if you're going to say in the interview, I'm happy to work weekends, that's going to get the people interested. If you can do school holidays, it's a good thing to mention. But if you can't do it, just simply don't bring it up. Anything that you can't do, you should not be volunteering as an answer. Because anything that you give away in terms of times you can't do is going to be used against you. So you're trying to say as many times as you can do as possible and hope they move on to the next question without ever finding out. If, however, they do ask about a time that you can't do, you want to talk about your preferences and then show some flexibility. So, for example, if you've got a major commitment on a specific day, could you move it to another day so you'd be available for that shift? Would you be happy to do that on an alternate basis or, an, or once every so often, but would prefer not to have the shifts fall on that exact day. So you're talking more about preferences than just refusals. All right, moving on to the next question. How would you manage an angry or irate customer? And unfortunately, when working in a supermarket, this is something that is going to happen. So some things you should definitely mention is one, always stay calm. You should never raise your voice at a customer and you should never shout at them, for example. And you want to convince the person interviewing you that you know that that's not an acceptable way to behave. So you ought to be very clear on the fact that you're going to maintain calm regardless what the customer throws at you. You're going to be very professional. Second thing you're going to make sure that you reassure them on is that you're going to follow Cole's policy. Just because they're angry and upset doesn't mean that they're entitled to refunds when they're not entitled to refunds. And you don't set the policies. You're not in charge of setting the policies. So you will follow the policies to the letter and not substitute in your own policy. And the last thing that you really need to mention is de-escalation techniques. And if you use the word de-escalation in your answer, that really shows that you know what you're talking about. And de-escalation techniques are just simple techniques for calming situations down. For example, angry and irate customers tend to just be angry because they really want someone to listen to them. And so if you're showing that you're actively listening and trying to help them, it goes a long way to calming them down. Often it's just real frustration about not being heard in their complaint. The other thing you can do is talk softly, talk quietly, never raising your voice. All these come into the de-escalation techniques. So get those three ideas in and you're going to score very highly on this question. So let's move on to question three, which is what do you know about Coles? And there's absolutely no point ever going to any interview anywhere without being fully prepared and fully researched. So as a bare minimum, you should have read the Wikipedia page for the company. But then moving beyond that, you need to start fleshing out your answer. So if you look at those circles, the basic one in the middle is things that everyone knows. And you have to know the obvious things. You have to know that Coles is a supermarket, for example. You have to know the really basic things. Then you want to move out to some things that only some people know. And then to make your answer really impressive, 
start going into things that only few people would know and only people who've really done their research would know. Things like the Bilo takeover, which happened quite a while ago. It's founding in 1914, using the word George Coles. If you are using that word, it shows that you've actually went out and actively researched. You can talk about them operating in what's called a duopoly with Woolworths. So the two of those dominate the Australian grocery industry. You can talk about how they used to be part of a conglomerate and were spun out from West Farmers. Another great tip is make sure you learn all of their private label black brands. So know all of the brands that Coles manufactures themselves and how they fit from the value right up to the premium brands that are owned by the company. So make sure you look those up and research all of that. You should be able to talk at length about the company. My other top tip is just to read the annual report of the company because there is more information in there than you would ever believe. It tells you absolutely everything you could ever reasonably want to know for preparing for an interview. And simply mentioning that you've read that is very, very impressive. So let's move on to question four. Why do you want to work for Coles? This is another question that is very, very interesting to the employer. They really want to know the answer to this and they would like to employ people that genuinely really want to work at Coles rather than people that haven't really thought about it and just applied for it because it was a job. So some things you should definitely mention is things like what makes Coles stand out? Why do you prefer Coles to say Woolworths? And I'm going to give you some ideas of things you could talk about. Why did you choose grocery? So why do you actually want to work in the grocery sector? Are you interested in food? Do you like working in retail? Have you got some experience working in retail that was very positive? Do you enjoy working with customers? All of these sort of things should come into your answer. Think about what you're doing every day and what your interests are. Progression and training, lots of opportunities available to move up levels, to take on some management responsibility, and you could talk about why you're very interested in that. But the most important thing is while you're giving your answer, to be enthusiastic, be smiling, and give the impression that you're really, really passionate about the business because that's going to make you stand out because a lot of people just go through the interview without any enthusiasm and don't seem terribly bothered about working at Coles, for example. Some things you should definitely not mention, they don't care that you live nearby. That's not a valid reason for wanting to work for the company. In practice, it probably is one of the reasons why you're wanting to work at Coles, but it's not one that you bring up in an interview. Anything about needing money, they don't care about. It's not of interest to their business. Uh, if you talk about it as a short-term job, just filling in before you start university or you'd like to go and do something else in the future, that's going to wreck the interview. Definitely do not bring that up. And really anything that doesn't impact Cole's business or isn't really relevant to Cole's business is just not worth mentioning. Focus on what they want to hear and the things that are going to make a difference to their business and show your interest and enthusiasm. A few things you might want to mention is that you can see this as a long-term career. Talk about the progression and training in detail. You can look up their corporate social responsibility, find some things that they are doing around corporate social responsibility and how that fits with your personal values, pick out two or three, and then just talk really passionately about working with customers because that's what they're all about. They're really interested in people that are going to be passionate about the job and deliver great customer service. And so if you get those ideas in, as many as possible, you should be able to form a really great answer around this slide. So let's look at another question. Tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. And this question you have to prepare for. So the strength is the easier one and the weakness is the one that can really screw an interview. So I'm going to teach you how to answer both of those. So for your strength, you need to have a strength that has got some significance. It has to be something that's quite important. So for example, great with working with customers, previous retail experience, reliability, those sort of things that are actually really good strengths to have. You have to supply some sort of evidence to make yourself stand out. So that could be a reference or it could be a qualification. And your strength must be extremely relevant to Cole's business. They are not interested in you being amazing at playing darts. It's not going to affect their business. So you have to do something that is really impactful to their business. So the way to structure your answer is, say, a substantial strength I would like to bring to Cole's is. So you've got the company name and what you're bringing is a good idea to highlight. 
This is evidence by, supply some sort of evidence because the evidence is what makes your answer stand out as compelling because it's not just you that thinks it, someone else in the world agrees that you definitely have that strength. And then lastly, you have to explain why this strength is going to help Cole's business do better. So if you're talking about reliability, you could say this strength will be use, will be of use to Kohl's because Kohl's needs people in the store to maintain high standards of customer service. So you just need to do that little bit of work for them to explain why it actually matters that your strength is there because this is part of selling yourself and really showing that you're going to have a positive impact on the business. For the weakness, you have to be very, very careful. You can screw the interview here. So the first thing you're going to make sure is that it's a genuine weakness. So I'm a total 100% perfectionist all the time. Well, that's not really a weakness. It could be sort of a little bit of a weakness, but it's not really a weakness. It shows a failure to be at all reflective, and it shows that you really haven't thought about the question at all, and you just try to cop out. Then you have to talk about actually doing something to sort it out. So you're going to spend more time talking about what you're doing about it than going on and on about how this is such a ma major weakness isn't going to make you terrible at your job. But then the most important thing is definitely make sure it's irrelevant to Coles or that it's irrelevant at your current level and you're working on it. So think about the job that you're doing and the things you have to be good at and don't say any of those things. For example, if you say something like, people always say I have a really bad attitude and upset customers regularly. Well, that just blew the whole interview. You know, that's just an extreme ridiculous example. People do say some bizarre things as their weakness that are actually exactly as the job description describes. So do not say anything that matches up with what your job description is. The way to structure your answer is a weakness that I'm aware of is key to show that you're aware of it, make it really clear that you have an awareness of it. And then talk about, I am actively working to overcome this by and say something that means that that weakness is going to go away in a year or two years, for example. A few ideas, spelling, you know, if you're t stacking shelves and working on the tills, they don't really care that your spelling's not very good. You're not writing essays. It's not too important. Taking on too much is a nice one to talk about because you can talk about not doing that in the future and that you've recognized it and you're putting a stop to it. So it's like, in the past I've had this weakness, but I'm putting putting an end to it. And if you're applying for an entry level position, then talking about delegation, which is something that you're not actually gonna have to do for a while. And you could basically give the impression that by the time you need to take on that responsibility, you will have learned how to do it. So anything that is irrelevant to the business, but a genuine strength that you're doing some genuine weakness, rather, that you're doing something about will get you a good score on this question. And lastly, as a bonus, I want to share with you some questions that you can ask at the end of your interview. So you can ask them about the next steps in the hiring process, which shows that you're really enthusiastic and really interested to get into the company, that you really care about getting to the next stage. Also ask about feedback. Do you get some feedback that shows that you're really reflective and you're trying to improve? Ask what to do to prepare. So that's again showing your enthusiasm and that you take your job seriously. Ask them about what the best thing about working here at Coles is and, in, and engage in a really positive discussion about how great the company is when they're telling you the things that they really like about it and seem really, really interested in what they're saying. A tricky question to ask is, what does an ideal Coles em employee look like? By asking this question, the manager or person interviewing you is going to basically describe what they're looking for. And this is your very cheeky, you have got to be slightly careful with this, cheeky opportunity to explain to them why you exactly meet what they're looking for. And lastly, one question that you ask has to be made up on the day. You can't prepare for it. You have to be listening to what they're saying and invent a question on the spot. So best of luck in your Coles interview. I wish you the absolute best of luck. It is really, really important to be super prepared. And finally, thank you very much for watching.